Hello, it's June back again from Poppyfield Card Crafts and today I have a faux leather technique to show you. When I've made a faux leather background or whatever in the past, I've used masking tape. This way is completely different and um, I think it's more realistic as a faux leather. This is a... Um, 5x7 I think uh, size that I have cut down and I have the signatures inside and lined with some red fabric and it really feels leatherish I'm very impressed with this Sheena Douglas um, this is her technique so I'll put this to one side and show you what we're using. I have a piece of craft card, this is A4, and this is thicker craft card than um, normal craft card uh, that I've used in the past, but it's very durable. You also need a bottle with some water in and glycerine. So what I've used is, if I can show you on this bottle, maybe say one tenth glycerine, nine tenths water. Put it in the bottle, give it a shake and then you're set to go. And now you need to wet the craft card like so and then press in this liquid don't um, feel the urge to rub it in in case you damage the fibers but if you just press it in like that all the way around then turn it over with the other side and do the same so yeah, I'm rubbing it there but I'm not rubbing it in to disturb the fibres so get it well and truly saturated and I can feel already the texture is changing And when you've done that, it's sticking to the mat, pick it up and do that. Give it a good squeeze. Open it back out. Wet it again. And on the other side, like so. And again, screw it up. And you can do this as many times as you wish. And the more you do apply the water and the glycerine and then scrunch it up you'll get the start of what looks like leather. 
This is going to be the outside, that's the inside. So I would use several um, sheets of craft card to do this and put them to one side to dry. I think it's best to let it dry naturally, but you try using your um, heat tool. I've just left mine to dry naturally. So I'll just get some more paper towel and dry this area and me. And then when you're happy with the finished result, the difference is compared to you can even hear it sounds hard still solid if you know what I mean where this is very flexible just like a piece of leather really just like that so this has been um, wetted if that's such a word um, at least oh, six to eight times and left to dry and then once when you're happy at this point when you've got it to the stage where you're happy with that then emboss it which I have done on this one and once it's embossed you can then leave it how it is or you can apply some colour to it. Now on the finished one I think it was um, Walnut Sting, I can't remember the name now, but um, it's a distress oxiding which I've just rubbed lightly across um, the raised design and I'll do the same on here just do it lightly because if you go in too hard you could still pull some of the fibres up that colour. So this is faded jeans with the Distress Oxide inks. And then I don't want to rub that or anything. I'm happy with how that is. So I'm going to seal it and I shall just bring my spray booth in. These cardboard boxes come in very handy. So, in the booth, I'm now using Crafters Companion Spray and Shine. It states that it forms a protective layer over the over your paper crafting elements, and I did use that on here. And I think you can see there's a, a sheen to it. So give it a shake and then spray. Oof. Put that to one side. that completely dries well you can see I think a little bit there you can see the sheen you need to decorate the inside on this one I used some red fabric I have a piece of uh, multicolored fabric for this one and because I was using the blue And I'll just put another piece of paper down there. 
I decided I would use this paler blue. So all you need to do is apply the glue all over. You know, you could make some um, really nice, pretty, cute, mannish, whatever, notebooks, little journals. Um, these would make nice stocking fillers or just a little gift for someone. That should do it. As you can see, I haven't pressed this, but if I put it on like that and stretch it, like that, add a little bit more colour on here. And then I'll spray it again when I'm finished. Then you can take your scissors and trim off the excess. The paper for the inside um, and the cold signatures, there's five sheets, three lots of five, and I've just used ordinary copy paper for the inside. Put that to one side. Now I want that to dry completely. And I think after that, because, because I'm stretching it, it's showing again. So I'll let that dry completely and then I'll just um, straighten it with the uh, paper trimmer. And I'm going back now to the one that I have finished. So I made three holes in the cover, three holes. I used um, a, a Japanese paper punch that I have and made the three holes. And then with one lot of five sheets of paper, made the three holes in that. And actually I did the middle one first. And then I just stitched this center one into the three places there and fastened it off underneath and then with the next set of five which is doubled the same thing but when I was putting um, I used a, a darning needle actually and when I was sewing this I just went to the left of the original uh, punched hole there and did the same and four the third piece I went to the right of the original punched hole and stitched that in and I used um, this thread from Crafters Companion as well and my darning needle. So when this is um, completely dry I'm going to give it another coat of the spray and shine to get it um, to shine like this 
and then I will straighten it and I will add my signatures inside. So there you are, bow leather technique. Give it a try. So until the next video, happy crafting. Bye.